Welcome to our guide on how to use Tensor Art AI. Today, we'll learn how to create amazing art with the help of this special AI tool. Throughout this tutorial, we'll explore the following steps about how to use Tensor Art AI. Making your Tensor Art AI account. Choosing the right style for your art. Writing good descriptions for the AI. Adjusting the settings to get the perfect look. Saving and sharing your art with others. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to create your own amazing AI-generated art using TensorArt AI. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. Let me introduce you to TensorArt. To start using it, you can find the link to their official website in the video description. Just click on it and you'll be on their website. TensorArt is a tool that makes images from the words you give it. It has many different styles you can choose from, so you can make all sorts of pictures. You can also use Tensor Art to make money by making images for other people. It's easy to use, even if you're new to this kind of thing. You can see some examples of what it can do on their website. To get going, go to their website and click sign in at the top. You can sign in with your Google account, Discord account, or email. Just make sure you agree to their rules when you sign in. I'm going to use my Google account. After that, you'll see a page where you can make your account look nice. You can add a picture, make a name for yourself, Write something about you and put in a special code if you have one. If you have it, you can use your invitation code, but it's okay if you don't. Check the description box below for more details. After you finish, just click save. Once you're done, you'll see this page, also called the dashboard. At the top, you'll find their logo and a search bar. You can use the search bar to find models, users, or anything you need. They also have a pro version. You can subscribe to it by clicking here. You can use their app, find tutorials, and connect with them on Discord. You can change the language, adjust notifications, manage your workspace, and set up your account as you like. You click on that, you'll see this page. You might have noticed the followers following runs, downloads, and likes. This is a feature on TensorArt that works like a social network. It lets users share their created images within the platform. You can add your creations here, create a project, or import from CVAG. It's like a social network where you can show off your work and connect with others who have similar interests. You can look through photos, follow other creators, and engage with their content. This space allows you to share your image-making skills, build a community of followers who like your work, and get feedback. It's a great way to get noticed, improve, and connect with like-minded people in the TensorArt community. Let's go back to this section, and if you noticed, there are also my credits here. Click on that to see your daily energy. This is what you use to create images. To make images, you need daily energy in your account. Don't worry, at the bottom, you have 100 daily energy. If you use it all in one day, you can sign in daily to refresh it back to 100. You can also earn more energy by inviting new users to create images for the first time. You'll get an extra 100 daily energy for that. If you host an original model and run it once, you'll earn more energy. In your account settings, you can switch between dark mode and light mode. You'll find other settings there, and you can also sign out when you're done. Let's go back for a moment. Now, you can also see the option I mentioned earlier about posts from other users and the leaderboard. If you scroll down here, you'll find the various models TensorArt offers. If you find one you want to use, just click on it. For example, if you want to use Clico Mix, click on that model. Then you'll be taken to a screen showing the model's name, Clico Mix Laura. You can see when it was last updated, its version, the number of runs and downloads, the base model, steps, and some useful trigger words for creating with it. To use it, click Run, and you'll see this page. This is where the magic happens in TensorArt. You can see the basic model name here, the one you selected. In the prompt section, you should write what you want to appear in your photo. In the negative prompt, you should list what you don't want to see in your photo. To work faster, try to plan your image prompts carefully. Clearly outline what you want to see and what you don't want in the image. Take advantage of the various models available and experiment with different settings to get the desired outcome. Additionally, make use of the image to image feature for reference if needed. Plus, there's an image to image feature. You can drag or import an image here to use as a reference for what you want in your photo. You can also choose the aspect ratio, like portrait, landscape, square, or even create a custom one you also have options like the steps and CFG scales that you can adjust to create different types of photos. Let's get started with the prompt. I've already added the prompt. You can select different models or remove the current one to add a new one. As you can see in the prompt, I've written anime style, cute, adorable, 
Bubblegum, Pokemon C wearing a bubblegum rainbow outfit, wearing a rainbow color for the outfit, and full body. I've also included some items in the negative prompt, such as extra fingers or other things I don't want to see in the photo. At the bottom, you can see the generation count, which is the number of resources used for generation and the number of photos. You can choose how many photos you want to generate with each click. Let's click generate and see what it comes up with. Here's the photo it generated. It's an anime style image of a girl in a bubblegum or rainbow colored outfit, and it's a full body shot. It looks good, so let's click for a closer view. You can rotate, zoom in, or zoom out as you like. You have options to remix it. Send it to an image upscaler, use the after detailer, in paint, publish it, or download it. Just click to download your image. In this part, we learned about using the image to image feature in adjusting steps and CFG scales. We set up a prompt and changed the model to Joy Animex, mentioning what we wanted and didn't want in the image. We also explored the generation count and number of photos options. After clicking generate, we got a cool anime style picture of a girl in a colorful outfit. We could remix it, upscale the image, or use the after detailer or in paint tools. We publish or download the image. Now let's continue with the next part of the video. Before we move on to the next part, I just wanted to ask a quick favor. If you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and it's the best way to stay up to date on my latest videos. So now, let's try another prompt in a different model to see what it creates after changing the basic model. I've changed the prompt and the negative prompt. Let's click generate and see what it comes up with. Here's the photo it generated. It has the orange hair at the front, straight hair at the back, and pink eyes, just like we described. There's also the bow we mentioned. Click download if you want to use the photo. Let's zoom in. Here's the photo it generated. TensorArt not only helps you create amazing images, but you can also sell these AI-generated images on freelance platforms like Fiverr and Upwork, where people have created opportunities for businesses to grow. You can use these AI tools to create custom pictures, deliver them to clients, and charge for your services. If you need more information on other AI tools, be sure to check out our previous videos on our YouTube channel. Now let's talk about that what we have done so far in this tutorial. We talked about TensorArt, a tool that turns words into colorful images. We learned how to sign up and use its features, like making images from other pictures, adjusting settings, and trying different styles. We also looked at setting up your profile and exploring the social side of the platform. We discussed how to manage your account settings, including changing the screen's brightness and signing out when you're done. We talked about the importance of using clear instructions to get the images you want and using the resources wisely. We also mentioned how you can join in the community to get ideas and feedback. We talked about how you can make money by selling your created images on freelance websites. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. If you have any ideas for future videos, or if you faced any problems with this one, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and family if you think they might enjoy it. Thanks again for watching.